What's good, room service gang? As you see, we're here to talk about these Niners today. What happened? Can you believe what we're dealing with right now? We went from Trey Lance to Jimmy Garoppolo. Now we got Brock Purdy. Who is Brock Purdy? Mr. Irrelevant, who's seeming real relevant right about now. Well, we got one game for him. Two, they get it off. Purdy looks to throw. Use check. Touchdown, San Francisco. In time, and he completes it to McCaffrey. Purdy underneath for the touchdown. It's McCaffrey. Hey, you know, I ain't too mad at what I'm seeing so far. But we got to talk about him because, as I just said, he's played one game. That's it. But what tends to happen once defenses figure out who you are, once the book is out on you, things seem to go down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Usually the quarterbacks that come in off the bench, backup quarterback, third string, Jimmy doesn't count. He's different. We'll get into him soon. So let's go to keep it on Brock Purdy, though. So this man can come in, do what he can do against a good defense, against a good team that has Super Bowl aspirations. That means something. I'm liking what I'm hearing in the locker room. Ayuk has his back. Kittle has his back. Nick Bosa saying he a dog. Even Shanahan was like, I don't know if I can say this, but this guy's pretty ballsy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is these are good things that you want to hear. Even yesterday, he told the team to tighten up. What? The rookie? You out here talking to, <laughs> talking to vets, telling them to tighten up? Yeah. I like what I'm seeing, but at the end of the day, he's still a rookie. So let's just say Brock Purdy has a bad game against the Bucks because if history serves as anything, then we know that rookie quarterbacks, first-time quarterbacks against Tom Brady, they catch nothing but L's. They're on six so far. I don't really want 0-7 because now it's my quarterback right now. Yes, we got to claim Brock. He's ours. Let's make it happen. But we have issues because once that, once those defenses start to figure some things out, Brock's going to have to even be more on point. Certain things won't be so wide open. They'll start learning your tendencies, how you act with pressure in your face and all that. Now, I will say with the pressure, they tried their best to bring pressure to my guy Brock, but uh, it didn't phase him. It didn't phase him. He was making quick throws like Tua does. Like Jimmy does, like a lot of other quarterbacks. Drew Brees, he was another one that, that made quick throws. I ain't comparing Brock Perry to Drew Brees. I ain't comparing Brock Perry to nobody right now. Because we have a very small sample size. It's, a, it's smaller than Trey's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but And that's, a, that's another one. But if he was to lose this game coming up on Sunday, and he didn't have a good game, let's say he threw like two picks and it, it just wasn't good. Because the Brock Purdy hype train is high right now. And people are kind of wishy-washy on the Super Bowl aspirations. They don't know. Do it stays the same? Does it not? They all pretty much say they need to see a little bit more, including me. But all you can guarantee, every time something bad happens, especially an L that doesn't look good, oh, it's going to be like Niners don't have a chance. Mark my words. Mark my words. Guaranteed. It's going to be all oh, Niners don't have a chance. They can't win the Super Bowl like this, you know, there's still a learning curve. All the things that you worry about from a rookie quarterback are going to come to fruition the moment he has a bad game. Mark my words. But Niner Faithful, we have to continue to have this man's back because confidence is just as important as skill. And I'm not talking about the side of my neck. Real ones understand. If you're going to work hard and you got skill, yeah, you got to work at it. But it all plays an, it all plays an important part. But we just got to have his back regardless because chances are he's not going to be playing perfect going to the playoffs. You know, this, this is a tough situation for Brock as far as, as far as the pressure goes and everything. Of course, we want him to do well. But let's just be realistic. When something happens, let's just continue to have his back because he's all we got. So. The fact that I said, yeah, he's all we got. Let's talk about Jimmy G. So, as we know, 
supposedly had a season ending injury on Sunday with a, with a broken foot. But it wasn't a Liz Frank fracture, so now his timetable to recover is a lot sooner. They said seven to eight weeks. To me, if I was his agent, I probably would say seven to eight weeks. I would say a, a week or two more than what is really needed. Because, I, I mean, the way that the drama has been surrounding this team in Santa Clara has been unreal. So y'all going to sit here and really think that Jimmy Garoppolo won't make any kind of noise towards the playoffs. Like, oh my gosh, he's he's progressing so well. Because of the, it wasn't a surgery, it's healing faster than we thought. Hmm, let's raise some questions and put some pressure on, on the coaching staff, on Kyle Shanahan. To, should we bring back Jimmy? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But let's talk about Jimmy. So let's say somehow Jimmy comes back. Because it seems like everything Jimmy wants, he gets. Right now. So I'm just saying. But anyway, let's just say he comes back. What are you going to expect from Jimmy? Has anyone ever seen Jimmy play good in the playoffs? Ever? Pretty sure he's the worst quarterback in the fourth quarter in the history of the game. I understand he's having a good season, but he's had good seasons before. Let's not act like we didn't go to the Super Bowl before. Let's, you know, like, listen, Jimmy had a good year that year. So... I see all this stuff in a regular season, and I'm happy. It's my team, but I ain't satisfied, nor does it make me forget. Just last year, his last throw was his eyes closed. I'm going to throw it over here and see what happens. I ain't putting the whole game on Jimmy because we know Jaquas Guitar missed that catch. There was a lot of things that went down, but that was key. Those are the moments where you need your quarterback to step up. Your coach can only do so much, can set up only so much, but at some point, your quarterback, the most important position in any sport, has to step up and make plays. Have we been seeing it in a regular season? Yes, but like I said, I really don't care. I need to see it in the playoffs, bruh. I really don't care right now. Like, I'm, I expect you to do this because you're a vet. So that poses the next question. Since Jimmy is a vet, would it make sense to have him come back to the team when he's ready, no matter when it is? Let's say it's the NFC Championship. Do you guys believe in that? Would that be a career suicide call for Kyle Shanahan to keep a rookie, something that's also never happened, a rookie winning the Super Bowl? But will a rookie ever win the Super Bowl if he doesn't get the chance? I don't know. There's just plenty of questions. It's a lot of things Kyle going to have to figure out later on. For right now, it's easy. It's Brock. It's our guy. Nobody's ready. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. Jimmy G, I don't trust him in the playoffs. He hasn't given me a reason to trust him in the playoffs. If Brock Purdy can do what Jimmy G does, which is make quick decisions, have a quick release, be accurate over the middle, and then he can do a little bit more, like more mobility, because he is more mobile than Jimmy G. If he can throw on the run, which we just saw him do, I, you know, I'm showing clips over here. My guy is doing work, Brock Purdy. And I, I'm just not seeing too much of a difference from Jimmy right now. And they, I don't want to hear like he's been there and he's so smart and he knows what to do and all that, because he doesn't. He makes rookie mistakes still, and especially in the playoffs. I mean, you could look at Tua right now. He's been on this MVP hype. Everything's good. What happened Sunday? He didn't just lose. He was missing open people. Like, if he made those passes, this would be a totally different game we were talking about here. Totally different. Because he missed some wide open stuff. But his, to me, he looked a little rattled. looked a little scared. Intimidation. That's a real thing. Does Jimmy get intimidated in the playoffs? I don't know, because it's like a light switch. Kyle instantly doesn't trust him anymore. I wonder why. Moving on. Now, of course, you know I really want to talk about my guy, Trey Lance. Got to talk about him. Because he's also injured. But he's walking around. No crutches, no limp. I get it. Gruesome injury. Your timetable is your timetable. Then there's the rehab process. 
that's the process nobody's talking about with Jimmy. So Kyle Shanahan said that, you know, it'd be way outside if Jimmy was to ever return, but he didn't close the door on the possibility. But for those that heard about the Trey Lance situation, it sounded like he closed the door on the possibility in the presser. But then the next day, somebody asked him like, well, what if he was cleared and was moving fast? Kyle Shanahan was like, hell yeah. I'm just saying, things could get real dramatic as they have been all season for us so far. So we really just need to pay attention to these signs and what things are and the things that are being said with these three quarterbacks, this quarterback circus we got in Santa Clara. Brock Purdy is here, barring injury, obviously. Jimmy G is not here, but he doesn't need surgery. His timetable to return is the time of the playoffs, but that doesn't mean he's going to play. Then there's Trey Lance. I'm just, as of right now, to me, Trey Lance is further along than Jimmy G is, right? Right? I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I'm not a doctor. I have had bones broke before where I've had surgery and the whole nine. I understand. Ankle is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've had it. Pretty sure that Trey can pull off something. And at the end of the day, he's still our starting quarterback. You tell me a starting quarterback that gets injured and has a possibility of returning. When, when do they not push hard to make them play? So the only other thing I could think of is Kyle Shanahan and them are just playing it cool. Because the moment you say that there's a real possibility, that pressure is applied. It's applied to that player. To now, like, oh, shoot, we got a hairpin. I got a hairpin. Get back. The team need me. The team need me. Team need me. And you should have that attitude. And Trey's not going to say no to coming in the game. But if the Niners were to come out and say, like, oh, yes, he definitely has a possibility of coming back. We're looking forward to it. Then so will the rest of the league. And now if something happens, he's like, oh, shoot, well, I've had a setback or anything like that. It's a letdown to the team. And we can't really have letdowns any more than what we already have. We're flying high. We're trying to stay there. But this team is just full of drama. Full of drama. I'm so happy to be a Niner fan because it's giving me so much to talk about. It's so like I just wake up every morning. There's something else. Every morning. I'm like, oh my gosh, the Niners is just too much. I also cover the Lakers. It makes it tough because there's so much Niner stuff. It's crazy out here. But I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments who do you think is going to be the quarterback for the rest of the season? Will they stay with Brock Purdy? Would it be a surprise Jimmy return or would it be the return of our starting quarterback? Number five, Trey Lance. We gonna see. I think Brock might finish the year. I don't know. I would be really happy to see Trey though. Y'all know that. Ha! Let me catch on the next one.